taking a spy, yeah. You be knowing it's the night, black and you can see the light. Rolling up, I'm getting high, yeah. Baby, sit back, I'm alive. Come with me, let's roll the dice. What's up, guys? Welcome back to an emergency breaking news episode of D3 Dropouts. We are basically one day removed from the last episode that comes out today, and this one will probably be coming out tomorrow. But we got some big news in the NFL, so Connor and I wanted to sit down and talk about it real quick. So, Connor, first off, obviously our arch nemesis, Aaron Rodgers, was contemplating leaving Green Bay this year. And as a Lions fan, that was pretty exciting. This morning, I woke up to a uh, ESPN alert that said Rodgers is to stay in Green Bay. And I wasn't too happy about it. What about you? What time are you getting up? I feel like that notification came to me around 1 p.m. I believe it. I believe it was around noon or 1 p.m. <laughs> it was a, it was a late it was a it was a late start for B this morning. Uh, oh yeah. But whatever. Uh, we all have those days. It's spring break for you, anyways. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, much to my demise, Aaron Rodgers is back to ruin all Lions' plans of having a smooth, clean, fun rebuild that we would love to have here in the next couple of years. He's delaying that. He's ruining it. He, if you're a Bears fan, if you're a Lions fan, even if you're a Viking fan, Vikings fan with a new coach, you hate this. You were ready for a soft division for the next few years to have a smooth rebuild for your team to kind of be the first to peak in that division. But no, Aaron Rodgers says this is mine uh, for the next four years. I, I mean, I realistically, I think he's probably got what two more yeah, years. Yeah, I think probably two. Aaron Rodgers. That's why. That's why a lot of that money. It's four years, 200 mil, I believe the contract is. Yep. And I believe 150 of it is, is straight up guaranteed. So he's already getting that right now. Oh, yeah. Um, I think that's to pay for – you're kind of paying in advance for his uh, his prime years here and probably the first, you know, one to three years. I think the last, you know, one or two years is probably going to be a not prime. He may not – they might even waive that. Uh, but they won't be having to pay him – it won't be any cap hit in those later years. So if you pay him more up front uh, while he's in his prime, you kind of have the option to relatively cheaply, since you've already paid a lot of the contract to cut him, waive him, uh, or, he, you know, say he retires. That, yeah. That so it's it's honestly, it could be a good, like a smart future play for the, for the green Bay Packers. They get to keep their yeah. quarterback for a few years. And then kind of, as he tindles off towards the end, maybe, maybe they could get something where he, they kind of like mutually agree to just disconnect or something. Yeah, I think the only person more, more sad about it than an uh, an opposing NFC North fan base is Jordan Love. Uh, the Packers basically <laughs> said that uh, they have no faith in him, that what they did was a mistake, uh, and that they do not see him as their starting quarterback ever. So, yeah. Sorry, Jordan Love. But Poor guy. Not going to be the starter in a Green Bay Packers. If you'd like to come on the podcast, uh, that'd be awesome, Jordan. Love, maybe you can talk. No, we about love it. to have you. We love backups. We're a bunch of dropouts. Of course, so. Green Bay dropout, D three dropout, the D three dropouts. Exactly. So moving on in the NFL talk, obviously the other huge news today. Kind of, um, I don't know if it was shocking to me. I think when I heard the the list of teams that Russ was in contact with, I obviously Denver was very big in play for a quarterback. Um, I really didn't think that they were going to go for him. Um, they did. I think they inherited the remaining, what is it, $51 million on his contract from the extension that he signed with the, with the Seahawks. So they're mm-hmm. already taking on a lot. Um, and I don't even think the Broncos are that good. Like Russ is just like, it's kind of like a really nice piece in like an okay silverware set. See, I disagree. I think, uh, the Broncos have done a good job of building that team other than a quarterback. Uh, they're a good defensive team. Javante Williams, good young running back. Uh, I, Jerry Judy is a good young receiver. I, you'd like to see them draft receiver in this draft now and kind of build up a, maybe a little more weapons for Russ, but it's a good defensive team with a go-to line, and it's kind of just missing that quarterback piece. I think it's clear to me that Aaron Rodgers was their number one because why, why would you do the deal, like whatever it was, an hour Absolutely. or later? Uh, so it's clear that they were Aaron Rodgers was number one on their mind. Um, but I, it's tough for me to say that they're, this makes them like a contender or an automatic, you know, playoff team even. I really, um, and so I didn't mean to cut you off, but I don't think this is as big of a trade as like the, uh, the Stafford to the Rams. It's not going to have that kind of effect on the Broncos. That was kind of my yeah. point. 
And I really, I really think that's not on Russ or the Broncos. I think it's more on the division that the Broncos play in. Yeah, no, totally. I think the Raiders are still going to be competitive. I think the Chargers are going to be good. And the Chiefs obviously are Our, running. Yeah, the Chiefs for a year. So they, I mean, you're, you're looking at three other teams that are at the very least 500 ball clubs. So it's, it's a tough division to win in. You know, they went seven and uh, I believe they went seven and nine last year. No, there's 17 games on. They went seven and 10 or eight and nine. I'm, I can't remember off the top of my head. So there, it's not like they were a bad team this year. I just think it's such a tough schedule. It's hard to say this early. You also gave up like uh, Noah Fant, the star tight end. You gave up him. Um, I didn't hate the move for Seattle. I mean, Russ isn't young. Uh, it, it is questionable what you do with like Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, guys in their prime. Do you think, I mean, is DK next? Because, I mean, you're looking at a team that really wasn't good, mostly because Russ wasn't healthy, in my opinion, and it's not the defense it was when they were a Super Bowl team, maybe whatever that was, five, six years ago. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's curious to see that they're going down. It, it seems like a premature rebuild, but I think it's the right move to do it while you still have some pieces, maybe. Um, and obviously they're going to have multiple first round picks here for the next couple of years. So uh, yeah, no, I agree. That. <clears throat> I it's agree just interesting to me as a veteran coach, like Pete Carroll, like, is he going to be around for this? Like, is this the start of a rebuild? Like clearly you, like, you're, you're oh, I really, I can't see them make like it in the Seahawks war room. I can't see them putting Pete Carroll as a part of their like future rebuilding plans. I mean, I don't even know if he wants to be. He's in a, he's got to be seventy years old. Um, to go through that whole process again is going to take years, and who knows if he wants to do that. Uh, so it, it's a weird day for the Seahawks, who have kind of been good from a, a lot of our like teenage years. So it's a weird move to kind of officially see them go. Uh, for the Broncos, like I said, I think this makes them a playoff team, but not a contender. Uh, I do. I know I kind of said that they weren't, but I do think they're a playoff team. I think it's just. The AFC is so tough now, and I, you'd like to see them get some star power in the draft maybe this year. Yeah, uh, which who knows what they're going to be able to get with all the picks they gave up. You really, you really want to get like a you re, you really want to get a skill player to kind of to to help Russ out. I, I think I think they need I, like yeah, I think they need another receiver badly if they really want this offense to compete. But talk about a team that has done a good job of being competitive without having a core. I mean, they have swung and missed on oh, so yeah. many quarterbacks. Paxton Lynch, Trevor Simeon. Basically, since the Peyton Manning Super Bowl team, they have had they have had just absolute disasters at quarterback. Pretty yeah. Much. I mean, Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater, very mediocre. Drew Locke, granted, fourth round pick, but he was I mean, he's going to Seattle now. But and even Russell Wilson, like he's a great quarterback, but he's also like what eight or nine years drafted he's already eight or nine years removed in the league seven or eight he's 33 he's 33 yeah so he's he's i mean he's sure he's got a couple more good years but he's not in his prime prime uh anymore yeah he's not no really and he hasn't anymore. been able to stay healthy i don't think and i don't think this is, might be a hot take and he could completely show me this wrong but i think we are great agreeing on like i don't i think i think russ's years may be best years may be behind him um yep i it's hard to say he's only 33. Stafford was only 33, 34 this past year. Yeah. And Aaron, of course, we said the opposite about Aaron Rodgers, who's turning 40. Um, but I just don't like it's a completely different game. He plays hard, he plays that kind of running mobile style. He's been injured a lot the last couple of years. I don't see, I just don't see it happening. I don't see him getting back to another, another Super Bowl in Denver, uh, despite that the really have done a great job building that roster and now have their guys. So we'll see. It's yeah. a tough decision. It's a tough. Yeah. And then the last thing I wanted to touch on while that, with that, I was going to add it in while you were talking. I didn't want to cut you off because you were spitting right there. Uh, he is only going to count for facts. $24 million uh, dollars of the salary cap his first year and 27 his second year. So they still have a lot. And I think the NFL just announced it was two, 208.2 million was the salary cap. So they still have yeah. well, well more than enough room to uh, to to sign some someone else. I mean, yeah, you got J- Javante on a rookie deal. Like Melvin Gordon, Javante is a great backfield. Uh, Judy's still on a, on a uh, rookie deal, I believe. Um, so yeah, they're gonna have room to make a move here. Uh, it's gonna be tough because I I know franchise tags were thrown around to Devonte Adams and some of the other wideouts that were kind of 
questionable to be available. You know, some of them had to go and gamble on games like Calvin Ridley. Uh, I think a name, I think a real name for them. I'm going to say this now. We'll see how it plays out. And I'm not sure how much you're going to have to pay him. Uh, is Amari Cooper? Uh, it's a great the, name. Yeah, I was just cut him. Um, I think he's still got another two to three years as a legit number two receiver. Uh, and you get him with Judy and with what Ross, I think you're, they're contending for that AFC um, West title. Yeah, no. And I agree with you, especially if, if you had Amari Cooper in there with Jerry Judy, I mean, that would be that, that starting three or the, that front three right there as like a skillful, I think that would do real well. So then the last thing, yeah, I think, sorry, go ahead. No, I just think that's a good target. It's also there. He's a good target for the lions and Murray Cooper. So I yeah. just want to kind of add that one. So speaking of the Lions, this is our last little thing. We'll keep this real short. Uh, obviously, as a Lions hopeful, anytime I see big name players being talked about getting drafted, especially for picks when the Lions do have a lot of picks this year, um, the name that I heard the most, especially today, was Christian McCaffrey. I believe the Panthers have fully opened up talks for trades, and they would like first and second rounders. Um, would you even be interested in going for him or no? No. No, wouldn't, wouldn't even give him the time of day. Um, great player is never on the field. Uh, Carolina is in complete rebuild, complete disaster mode. Uh, so they're just looking for assets and a guy that like really, like, they're not going to, it's not like they're going to go to the playoffs with a healthy Christian McCaffrey anytime soon. Now, so do some. you think he's not healthy maybe because the Panthers are like in that rebuild, they I have been pretty bad. They're not, I mean, I, they're definitely not good. And obviously no. the Lions aren't great either, but, oh, you don't think? I don't. Like, I don't, I just think he's kind of undersized and kind of injury prone. Um, wow. I don't think that has much to do with the team. I, I It's not that I hate the player in McCaffrey, despite like I would never touch him in fantasy football. Uh, we'll get into that come fantasy football season, but like, it doesn't fit the Lions situation. You already have DeAndre Swift, who is a proven top 12 back in the NFL. Uh, you, he's kind of that speed pass catching back. He kind of like you saw Jamal Adams is kind of that, or Jamal and Jamal Williams was kind yeah. of that um, power back. I think I'd, I'd like to see the Lions maybe take, take a chance on a guy in like the fourth round on like a, like a guy that's a power back and maybe just put him as a supplemental back on a cheap contract and see what he can do. Uh, that's what they really need. They don't need to go out and buy a star studded running back. I think you have that in Swift for relatively cheap for now. Uh, so as a Lions fan, I don't really see that happening as another, maybe a team that I could see that happening is like a, gosh, off the top of my head, I can't even, like all the contenders already, maybe like a, I mean, if you could afford him, well, here's the problem is they want picks for him is the Rams. Rams. I was just about to say the Rams, the Rams if they added him, him dude. And the, Ram, the Rams don't have any picks to give. They they gave them up all. To the Lions, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I think like, a, I mean, you have Debo there, but like a 49ers makes a lot of sense to me. Um, oh. Even like, Dude, the Broncos. The Bron- I like the Broncos backfield. I, I like uh, – I'd almost say like the Eagles could use a running back. I know they're kind of a little – they could also use a quarterback. Um, I think the Raiders could use Kirsten McCaffrey. I don't – like Josh Jacobs is just kind of like- – I think out of the teams that you said, I would like him to go to the Raiders. Though. I think the Raiders would make the most sense, just in my mind at least. I don't know. The Raiders were – I think they were really good last year, and they got – down to those, they, they, they were in the playoffs. And I think that just, I mean, obviously run games, not everything, but if you had Christian McCaffrey and he's healthy, obviously, like you said, plus all the other tools yeah. you have on defense and offense, I think that maybe their season ends up a little different. Maybe not, but maybe. Yeah. I mean, Josh, Josh Jacobs is average at best, maybe even slightly above average, but um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's a good fit for a team. Like it's this AFC West is crazy. So now it feels like we keep bringing up how crazy it is up, but it, it is true. And it rings, uh, you know, even with talks of Christian McCaffrey. So, Oh yeah. Well, that's all I got for you. If that's all you got for me, I think that's all we got for everyone else, dude. 
No, it's good to vamp. You know, I love that I get to talk football. We about to go into March Madness here on next week's podcast. <laughs> crazy but to get to talk about football in march is so exciting it gets me kind of gets gives me tingles gives me a little chill down on my spine Woo! when it's fall and it's not fall it's spring it's getting nice out we're gonna go into summer i'm gonna have a great time the lines are gonna suck again come the fall but oh again, come like, on we did not have to throw man. that in but yeah so we'd love to talk football uh if you love to hear us talk about football let us know we'll bring anything up we'll debate topics uh Football is my thing, so let's do it. All right, well, thank you guys for watching that emergency show. We'll be back next week with more content. Peace. Baby, working for the table. Throwing these blue hundreds while you're dancing for the label. Yeah, and you know that I'm unstable. But you know I love you and I'm loving all your angles.